Hey guys, welcome back to another Fly Tying Tuesday with Avid Max. My name is Max, and today we're going to be tying a big ass pike fly. So, in the vise, I got a uh, A Rex Trout Predator. Uh, this is a TP610. Uh, this is a four out size. Uh, really good, strong hook, uh, wide gap, um, long shank for you to tie you know, a significant amount of material on. Um, I really enjoy tying on the A-Rex stuff, so if you haven't tried them, give them a shot. For my thread, I've got some uh, 100 denier GSP from Vivas. Uh, this is kind of the right um, thickness for using bucktail in my opinion. Uh, I found that the 50 is not quite strong enough to pull as tight as you want, and the 150 is a little too big to where it kind of grabs too much material when you're actually trying to hollow tie or you know, build up bulk. So to get it started, uh, I'm going to start some zappa gap, uh, which is always good when you're using the GSP because it is so slick. I'm just going to lay a little bit of GSP or a little bit of a zappa gap on there, um, and then we'll start in with the GSP. So I'm just going to start that back off the eye and snip out my tag here. Start out with some uh, slopping in the white. The feathers aren't super important for this one, uh, but we're gonna use uh, probably three or four of them. Um, and we kinda wanna stagger the tips, um, just so you kinda have a nice uh, tail on there with somewhat of a taper. Um, kinda one of the big uh, things I've definitely come to learn while tying uh, these pike flies is the taper uh, with the flash, um, and even somewhat the bucktail. Um, and just all other materials that are kind of hanging back off the fly. It's really important to kind of have them staggered and or um, vary the lengths of the tips just so you get a real nice kind of like, you know, triangular profile on the fly. So next, got some uh, saddle and the grizzly. Uh, we're gonna throw a couple of these in there. Same thing, uh, no real preference in selecting your material. You know, if you can find a little bit stubbier ones, uh, you know, you might be able to save the longer ones for when you really need it. And these are gonna be almost to the length of the schloppen. And then we got our uh, Magnum Flashaboo, this is the Moonlight. Um, so it's got some, some black holographic in there, some silver and some pearl. And just the color combination of all three really uh, kind of makes the, the saddle pop and um, just adds a nice kind of flash to this particular fly. So there are used a uh, flash of blue like this before. Uh, if you just make a nice little cut on the side here, you can kind of pull out the amount of strands you need, snip it, and then you can stagger the tips. So we want these to be about the length of the schloppen. Um, so when you cut it from just the package the way that I did, you know, you can just pretty much have the material and get that kind of, you know, taper and length that you're looking for. Move on to some bucktail. Um, add a little bit of super glue here onto the shank again, just to make sure everything stays in place. Said so most of these materials that we use um, are pretty slippery, so the super glue really just helps reinforce things and um, give you a clean spot to tie in at. I just kind of grab uh, almost a pencil pencil thickness of the bucktail and uh, I try to kind of keep the tips aligned when I'm pulling them together. When you're using the bucktail you definitely want to like hold everything very firmly. Um, if you are not tight with holding it, um, it really wants to kind of go everywhere on you so just be forceful when you're using the bucktail, hold it tightly and uh, tie it in tightly. So because we're covering all this up, we're just going to wrap this all the way up the shank, not even worry about trimming it out. A 
little hair clip uh, really kind of helps hold material back. Uh, so now we're going to do a dubbing loop. Um, we're going to use some holographic silver ice dub. Put this in there. So got this all set up. And I'm going to take finger and have the thread here. and make a couple wraps in front and behind. So, got my dubbing twister there and lay this loop in there. And we'll start spinning it up. This is probably one of my favorite uh, tools on my bench. Um, it really helps uh, do everything I need to with dubbing and or you know, pulling material back. Um, so if you don't have one, definitely uh, worth having on your bench. Start palmering this around. Uh, pull back material as we're going along here. Well, we don't want it super tight. Capture that. Snip it out. And then we're going to tie a little bit in just like that, which kind of helps prop things up a little bit. A little bit on the bottom. Pull it all back. So I leave myself a little bit of space up in the front here uh, for the hollow tie we're gonna do. So back to the bucktail. Once again. A little super glue on here. And we'll do two loose wraps, kind of evenly spread it on the shank. And then I'm going to pull tight and make one wrap. Pull a little tighter, make another wrap, a little bit tighter. And the super glue kind of helps with this next step. Uh, so I'm actually going to trim out the tips here, making sure that I don't really catch any of the dubbing. And now you can use a hollow tool. Um, got a casing here uh, that works pretty well. Um, pen that's been you know disassembled also works really well. Pull all my materials back, and then I'm gonna pinch the head, um, and that really kind of helps it start to have somewhat of a taper going back. Um, so, like I said before, be forceful and really pinch and kind of shape it so that you get that V going back. Because uh, we, we don't want this hollow to be uh, super bulky. Um, we want it to kind of meet the rest of the taper that we've got going on already uh, so that we can kind of gain as we're going up to the, the, front, the front hook. So with everything pulled back, make 
some wraps right in front and built somewhat of a little dam. And definitely making tight wraps. Gonna make them even. Hit a little bit of super glue on my thread wraps. Uh, as you kind of build a little bit of an angle with the GSP, it definitely wants to slide on you, so reinforcing with some super glue really helps. Um, and then we're gonna get back in there with some more flash. So I've got my tips, I'm gonna start tapering them, just kind of pulling them so that they're all uneven and then roll them a little bit in my fingers and twist them up a little more. And I'll try to fan the flash boot out, make a loose wrap and start tightening from there. And then I can kind of spread them out a little more evenly. Um, and then we're going to also add a little bit of flash on the bottom side of the fly. Go over, fan the flash out a little bit, a couple securing wraps, and kind of move them around. So really looking for that teardrop profile. And we'll hit a little bit of super glue on there. Uh, and then we'll move on to the front portion of the fly. So we got a couple things to add on here prior to connecting that back fly. So we'll start with a little more super glue on here. And then we're gonna add our five mil glass rattle in here. So we'll lay one of these down, throw a little bit more super glue down. Um, we're gonna put this just almost right in the middle, maybe a little bit closer to the front of the hook and make some securing wraps situate it how I'd like and then I'll coat it with some super glue to make those thread wraps stick a little bit better on there. So just got some scissor clamps here um, that are going to work to cut my wire. Got a you know six inch piece or so, maybe a little less. And start this right along the side of the hook here. 
and we'll walk it up to the front. So, working with the beads. All I gotta do, three or four on there. There's one. And we'll go back through the beads. Now we got some of our polar reflector flash and uh, I kind of want to make sure that I got everything going the same direction so the downward part will be tied in to the shank so that when I'm palm ringing everything kind of lays back. Um, if you want to save you can also trim the edge of the bag here and pull out strips that way. Um, or just keeping the entire thing in your hand and kind of getting the length that you need um, and then snipping it off really helps save material. We're gonna go for another hollow tie, and uh, we got our bucktail. And once again, lay it down on there. Try to really get the right shape. And start snugging it down. This one I'm not even going to worry about trimming up the tips just because we are starting to add a little more bulk to it. So we got that right behind the rattle there and then we're going to add some more flash coming back. Kind of fan it out a little bit. Then we'll repeat the same thing on the bottom.
Now right on the middle part of this, we're gonna do another hollow tie with the bucktail. A little super glue. Things don't slide around on us. So now we're going to bring our thread up to right before rattle and we'll do another hollow tie. Once again, pushing on that bucktail helps set the angle that we're looking for. And then we're gonna put just a little bit more flash. Pretty sparse though. And then finish it off with the head. Got some fin raccoon. Uh, we're gonna do the red. Um, this is a really cool material if you never tried it. Uh, real popular in steelhead patterns. Um, it's basically like rabbit uh, with it being zonked, uh, but much, much longer fibers. Add some good bulk to a, a loop, which is what we're gonna do here. So once again, material clip. Kind of pull everything back. And make another loop here. So I got the D-loop tweezers and uh, I'm going to put our fin raccoon in there and make sure that's tightly in there. And then I'm gonna trim out the hide, very tight to the hide, so that I'm leaving this butt section here. And we're gonna put this in our dubbing loop. And spread them out just a little bit. And then we'll start our spin. The 
We'll kind of pull everything back to the V. So we start working it on here a little bit. Definitely gonna trap some of these. So just trying to pull them apart, pull them back as much as you can. Definitely gonna help you. And then you could always get in there with the brush and kind of pull those out a little bit more. And then I'll snip out my remaining loop. And this is where wetting your fingers really helps kind of get some of those erratic hairs out of your way. And then I'll make some real tight wraps at the head here. Build up a little bit of a thread, thread head behind the eye and we'll comb it out. Move our material clip there and then re-insert it once you got all the raccoon pulled back. And then finish it off. Just hit a little bit of super glue on my thread right behind the eye. And do a quick whip finish. Snip out my tag there. And then brush it out a little bit more. It's always crazy to see on these pike flies. You know, it doesn't look like a whole lot and it just looks like a mess when you're tying it. But as soon as you kind of complete the head of the fly, uh, very satisfying to kind of see the monstrosity that you've created. Hear the rattle, it's got some noise in there. There you have it. Big ass pike fly.